All right, welcome back to the Knives Fast channel. Guys, it is time for the review of this beauty. Let's say hello to Ren and Stimpy and Powder Toast. Whoops, and Powder Toast Man and Log and TV and point at the right people. Woo, or characters. And let's get started. Okay, uh, typical Knives Fast beginning to this video, guys. Uh, this is the Finch Chernobyl Ant. Uh, you saw my unboxing, um, my first impressions video, I should say. Um... Not too long ago, as a matter of fact. And the reason is these are coming out now. Uh, have been out for a while by the time you see this. So I wanted to definitely get the review out so you guys had my full thoughts. This is the Parquet or Tan Micarta 14C28N Hand Satin from Finch. Right here. These guys design them here in America. They're made by QSP in China. Love this. Now, most of you have already figured out this is pretty much a sod buster pattern as a flipper now there are three versions of this there is uh this guy right here um which as i just showed you on the box is referred to as the parquet or tan micarta now you've got a uh, kind of a two-tone thing going on there uh really cool it almost gives it like a snake skin or burlap look or whatever but i i not sure exactly does it say, if I go over here on the website, what the material is? Let's see. Um, no, it just says brown micarta. So I don't know if it's if it's you know linen or what it is or if it's canvas or burlap. Or, but you can see the pattern in the end cut there. Uh, really awesome. I mean, look at that, guys. That is sick looking. And then you have the jigged red G10. And then you have the glow resin. Now, this one and the Jig Red G10 are $99, okay? That's a deal. That's why these are already going pretty quickly. Just uh, They just dropped today when I'm recording this, and I know the first dealer that had them, they were you know, pretty close to gone pretty quickly, So especially the resin, but the resin is going to be $130. Um, so uh, just so you know, and the resin is a glow-in-the-dark uh, what do they call it? Um, glow resin. That's exactly what they call it. And uh, so check that out as well. But this is the brown or, uh, you know, um, tan micarta, I guess you, whoa, you would call it. Uh, so typical with Finch, you have uh, your glow um, loom logo here. Now, the loom logo on this one does stand proud ever so slightly. It's really the first one I've had like that. It's not bad, though. I mean, you just feel it. If I try to like sit here and microscopically find the, it's it's tiny guys. It's not going to bother you. It's just you do feel that transition ever so slightly, and you know it may just be because of the type of material. Now, nice smooth transitions to the liners, steel liners. Uh, really great chamfering. Uh, nice. Uh, the screws are countersunk. Flat pivot. Uh, does stand up just a little bit, but not much. Um, and great looking clip. There's a totally different clip on this one. It's a little more flexible than some of the Finch clips. It's a thinner clip. Comes in and out of the pocket well, but guys, I've found the retention is fine. It is well, well done in that category. It is a titanium clip. Two screws. You got about that much sticking out. Whoop. Let me get it right. About that much sticking out of the pocket. So really, really well done. Two, um, <laughs> uh, barrel spacers. Wow. Can't get the word out. Uh, there is no milling. Let's just look. No milling to speak of uh, for weight reduction, but it's not necessarily with, with this thin, this small of a knife. And we'll talk about that. On the blade, you've got this great looking drop point, uh, like a sod buster or a, um, a bull nose. Uh, and you got the Finch name over here. And over here, you got 14C Whoa, can't see it. There we go. 14C28N and Chernobyl Ant up there. Uh, great looking hand satin. Are you kidding me? This is, uh, I hope I can do, look at that, guys. So beautiful. Finch and, and QSP just nail this every time they do one. Uh, love the sharpening choil. Really well done. Perfect on the, the plunge there. Really, really good. You do have some jimping back here. Uh, really, really nicely done there as well for the typical grip. Uh, that's good. And even if you choke up, it's good. It's in the right place for this knife. Now, for me, it's a four-finger knife back behind. And still, you know, good good amount of room up here. But 
I, you know, this is fine right here. It's a little small for me uh, sometimes, but, you know, for just a basic pocket knife, this is fine. And I will definitely, just like now, the story on this one is uh, Spencer was uh, fishing with, I think, his father. And there was a fly called the Chernobyl ant, a fishing fly. And uh, the, the, the rest is history. So this would be a great fly fishing outdoors knife. Uh, love it, love it now. Centering. Oh, man, let me look off camera. Very good. Dead center there. I think you can see. Uh, and lockup is like 35 or so. Uh, good access to the lock bar. It does stand up. does have some scalloping. You just come straight across. Nice, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Tension on the lock bar there. It's not bad. There's no lock stick. No anything like that. Really good. Uh, and guys, one shake, one good shake, if I had done it right, one good shake gets you home on this one. Um, it wants to drop straight to my thumb. And then, like I said, little shake gets you home. Uh, really, I mean, this thing and the chamfering is so well done. Everything is so well done. And again, I just pointed that out because I uh, felt like I needed to. But at the same point, it doesn't bother me in any way, shape, or form. It is riding on bearings. Man, everything is just so well finished. You do have the typical Finch flipper tab. So grabs a hold of uh, your finger really, really well. As you can see, flips right out. I, there is no failing. Let's try. Nope. You are not going to fail. The detent is spot on on this one. Uh, again, kind of already told you, drop to your thumb. One uh, gets you home. Really, really good. I mean, what a great knife, guys. This is going to be a very popular one for them, in my opinion. Uh, I've already carried it like four times. That's why I feel comfortable carrying it already. All right, let's do some size comparison. So first things first, there is the holiday, guys. So it is, uh, let's get pivot to pivot here. Hold on. Tiny bit bigger on the handle, tiny bit bigger on the blade. On as far The, the um, holiday is a tiny bit bigger, but barely. All right. Uh, thought this would be a good one. The Rough Rider uh, Den Denim Micarta Work Knife. Again, a traditional. Thought a lot of you would kind of know the size. Exactly the same. Uh, I don't own a Sodbuster pattern knife, so I can't uh, get one of those out to show you. Sorry about that. Uh, I would love to get a GEC Bullnose at some point or, or a, a case Sodbuster at some point if I could find one I liked. And then uh, another good size comparison is the Benchmade 945, the Mini Osborne, guys. As you can see, very, very, I'm going to go down just a little bit here. Very, very similar on the size there between the 945 and uh, the Chernobyl Ant. So that those should be good size comparisons for you. And just since we're doing size comparisons, we'll put the 8-inch Mach 51 out here as well. And as you can see, quite a bit more on both ends. Now, as far as specs... Uh, this one is seven inches, so an inch less than the Mach 51. Uh, it is three inch blade, four inch handle. Um, the handle thickness is a half an inch. The handle height is just under an inch. Uh, 2.6 ounces. Again, that's why no weight relief was really needed. Um, and again, designed in Stillwell, Kansas, manufactured in China. So, so again, that, guys, I'm just telling you, that hand satin on the blade. I mean, I think QSP may be the one that does that the best. It is just ridiculously gorgeous. Now, one more little thing, and I, I just want to point it out in case anybody said there. You can, if you like, look with a microscope or just look real closely. There's a couple little ripples right there. You see that? Just one or two on that handset right there. You see one with that kind of light going through it there. Uh, again, doesn't bother me in, in the least bit, but in case you saw it, I wanted to point it out. None on this side. Nope, nope, nope. Just that one or two little kind of ripple. This this is dirt up here where I've been cutting with it. Um, just right there, but again, not a big deal to me in any way, shape, or form, but thought I would point it out. Uh, gosh, that drop to your thumb is crazy. Uh, and just a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. So there it is, guys. The Finch Knives Chernobyl Ant. These are going to go quick. If you want one, be looking at the dealers. Heck, by the time this video drops, it might be too late. Hopefully not. Get that really awesome Finch box as well. Uh, guys, that's it. Having one of those days, folks. 
I forgot something in this. Um, so two things. Number one, I didn't really talk about the lock on this guy. Uh, it's at about 45 to 50%, I would say. Uh, and again, no blade play, no lock rock. And I also didn't talk about the edge. Now, it did come uh, where it needed a little bit of stropping. It was a little ragged on the cutting. So I stropped it and let's see what we have now. Yeah, so as you can see, once I stropped it, guys, that, that stock, I knew it would be like this and it wasn't right out of the box. Uh, but again, it needed just the slightest little bit of a, on a leather strop. And there you go. Good thin stock. We didn't really talk about that either. So now this video is getting even longer. But uh, there you go. Good thin stock. Cuts like a dream after a little strop. Guys, there you go. So that is the Finch Knives uh, Chernobyl Ant. Uh, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. And give me a thumbs up. And again, if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. This is the Knives Fast Channel. But there you go. Uh, Chernobyl Ant. Guys, thank you so much for watching the Knives Fast channel.